What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai, and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you're all having a great Sunday so far. Today we're doing a little bit of a follow-up video on the Noveski N4 that we took a look at last week. If you want to check out the video, link for it right up here in the corner. As mentioned, the N4 comes standard with a Cherry Bomb muzzle device from Q, so it was only fitting that we mount up something to match, like the Trash Panda. <laughs> look at this box art. The Trash Panda is an all titanium silencer optimized for a 7.62 size round. This is the quick, fast attach version of the Q Half Nelson, which is basically the same thing but direct thread. And then you have the larger, quick attach Thunder Chicken and its direct thread counterpart, the Full Nelson. Q designed these cans with practical shooters in mind who want to suppress multiple platforms while maintaining a short, lightweight, and hearing safe package. How light, you might ask? Well, the 6.9 inch Trash Panda comes in at just 11.8 ounces, and on the right platform, it balances things out perfectly. The whole can is PVD coated, fully rotary welded with no outer tube, and features standard size wrench flats for easy install and removal. To top it all off, every Trash Panda comes with a half by 28 and 5 8 by 24 Cherry Bomb brake, so you have the option to easily use it on more than one platform. Now I have the Trash Panda all boxed up just as you would receive it or your dealer would receive it if you ordered it from my friends at Shooting Surplus who happen to be the sponsor of today's video. If you head on over to ShootingSurplus.com you can find Trash Pandas, Half Nelsons, Full Nelsons, Sugar Weasels, Honey Badgers, and all of that cute goodness. Since items like this can be a little bit difficult to get if you happen to have your eye set on something and they are out of stock, you can easily sign up to be notified when that item comes back in stock. That way you're first in line. On top of all of that, if you use code TALENTSI at checkout, you can save 5% off your entire order. And when you're ordering some pretty pricey items, that 5% can definitely go a long way. So again, huge thank you to Shooting Surplus for sponsoring today's episode of Sunday Gun Day. Now let's head back to the workbench and see what comes inside of this box. All right, guys, here we have the Trash Panda in its original box. Typically, I would not show something like this on video, but this is too cool to not share an unboxing. So you got some awesome artwork, which Q is obviously known for if you are following them on social media. Got the Q crest on his jacket there. Trash Panda by Q 2017. Live free or die. Something to live by there. This box is equally as nice. Got their slogan on the bottom there. Now let's get into the good stuff. So here we have yet another trash panda looking at us. It comes with a little coin bag cover for the actual can. Pop that out of there. Got some reading material, some rock set for when you choose which one of these you want to use. Like I mentioned, the Trash Panda and the Thunder Chicken come with two Cherry Bomb muzzle devices, so depending on what you want to throw this can on, you have some options now. What's really nice about this is that if you are spending a bunch of money on a can, you probably want to use it on a few different platforms, so with the two different thread sizing options on here, it gives you the ability to do that. Luckily for me, the N4 PDW already comes with one installed, which means I could throw these on some other platforms down the road and then use this thing across the board. So for the actual can itself, again, I can't really get over the <laughs> Trash Panda artwork on all of this stuff. Here we have the all titanium Trash Panda in all of its glory. You're not going to be able to see much of the internals of here, but obviously, as you can imagine, the muzzle device fits right inside of there and it takes up this first chunk here up to the first weld. Then you can see the end cap here, which should give us a good flash signature. And I already know how these cans perform, so I'm excited to shoot it. On the back side here, you'll notice some standard wrench flats that way. If you really want to tighten this thing down, you can just use something like an adjustable wrench here and get that thing very, very snug. Now, while we're down here at the table, let's actually take a closer look at these muzzle devices really quick because this is obviously what Q sort of stresses when they talk about this stuff. So with these cherry bombs, it's using tapers all the way around here to keep the can secure on the gun. 
you can mount it up with another standard wrench right here. You don't have to worry about using a specific proprietary tool. This is very easy to install and again you can put them on pretty much anything. It features 360 degrees of ports all the way around this thing, that way you do not have to worry about shims and timing this thing appropriately. And it's also backwards compatible with 90 degree shouldered barrels, so depending on what you're throwing this on, chances are it's going to fit. Now a good reason for the tapers on this thing is actually apparent already because of course this gun has already been shot. You may notice that with the way the tapers are positioned on here, all of the carbon basically stays out to the front of this muzzle device on here, and the back part is almost completely clean, and this already has probably close to 350 rounds through it. Not only does this keep the threads clean, that way you can easily remove and install the can again after you've been shooting it for a while, but it also minimizes any kind of shift in your point of aim and point of impact. So with these tapers, I will show you how to install this thing. Simply slip it over and twist it on just like that. Now the cherry bomb allows this thing to line up almost perfectly every single time and I have put this can on and taken it off while I was testing it and it seems like this thing remains zeroed the entire time. You can't always say that with some other options out there. If you have a direct thread can and you're just throwing it onto a 90 degree shouldered barrel, chances are you may see some impact shift. That's enough talking and nerding out about this thing. Let's go out and see how it performs. 150 grain Fiocchi coming direct out of a Q cherry bomb. Two hundred and twenty grain arms core with no can. And now some super clean two hundred and twenty grain three hundred blackout coming from my friends at TA Targets. Now back to the 150 grain Fiocchi, now with the Q Trash Panda. Arms core, 220 grain. Can definitely remove the ears for this. And now finally, the best performing subsonic round for today's testing, the 220 grain coming from TA Targets.
So there you guys have some cut and dry, no frills testing there. Unfortunately, camera audio quality isn't always the greatest, but I think after reviewing the clips that it did a good enough job of getting the point across. One thing to keep in mind is that I'm sort of shooting in a little bit of a valley there, so you get some echoes off of the side walls and then the rock wall in the rear. But overall, I'm definitely very happy with the way that this thing performed. We had the three control tests in the beginning, just shooting the Q Cherry Bomb muzzle device with three different types of ammo that I was testing. I think the device did a pretty good job of dispersing that energy. I didn't feel too much of a concussion like you might find with some other very aggressive style brakes. But the whole point of it is obviously to fit inside of here up until the first baffle, so that whole thing actually acts as the first part of the suppressor. Once you place that inside of here, of course, all of the magic happens right inside of this section here, and I was very surprised with how this thing sounded. With the three different types of ammo, I of course was shooting Fioki, the Arms Core stuff, and then the TA Targets ammo. With the really hot lower grain stuff all the way up to the 220 grain, I noticed that the tone remained pretty much the same throughout shooting. That sort of high-pitched shriek is a thing that bothers my ears personally, and this one had a really nice tone to it. It was almost low-pitched. It suppressed the 150 grain, decently well and then as soon as I moved up to the arms core ammo I knew I was able to remove my ears after that. The arms core ammo was definitely great but as soon as I moved up to the TA targets ammo which I happen to have sitting right here next to me I could notice a slight variation. This is of course much cleaner ammo. I believe I got the arms core ammo from a military surplus store somewhere. I would say that they were pretty similar as far as how they sounded. They should have relatively the same decibel reading because they are both 220 grain. However, this is going to keep your gun a little cleaner and probably running a little bit more reliably. As always, big shout out to my friends at TA Target because they are a sponsor of Sunday Gun Day. Every week, that is all the steel that I shoot, so if you want to pick those up, there's always a link in the description down below. So for my final thoughts on the can, of course, you guys probably already know that I think this thing is a really good value for what you're getting here. Full titanium can with two different muzzle devices. You can run it on multiple platforms. You're not gonna get any point of aim, point of impact shift when you are removing this thing and putting it back on. I think it's a really solid package and I'm looking forward to adding hopefully a few more Q cans to my collection in the future. For now, this thing is going to be living on that N4 PDW back there and chances are I will just pick up another one if I want to put it on a different gun. So I believe that's all that I had for today. If you guys have any questions on the Q Trash Panda, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe because I make new videos every week. Again, huge thank you to my friends at Shooting Surplus for sponsoring today's episode of Sunday Gun Day. I wouldn't be making these videos without you guys and everyone else who supports the channel over on Patreon, so can't thank you guys enough. That's all for now. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.